So welcome everyone to our TIA Divest from Climate Destruction webinar tonight. Thank you all for joining. My name is Jenny Bach. I'm an organizer at Friends of the Earth US and I'm based in New York City. Hope everyone is staying uh, safe and healthy right now. So we are excited to be launching our TIA Divest campaign um, a week uh, ahead of the 50th anniversary of Earth, Earth Day. Um, and we are also launching it ahead of the Stop the Money Pipeline campaign's big day of action that's happening next Thursday, April 23rd. So in honor of all of these big events, we are kicking off our campaign with this launching webinar. And we will get into why are we targeting TIA and what does it have to do with uh, you know, fossil fuel projects. And especially we're going, to, we're going to be talking about the Cricket Valley Frack Gas Power Plant located right here in the state of New York that TIA has financial ties to. So with that, we'll kick it off and go ahead and introduce the rest of the speakers for tonight. So let's see, we can just go in the order of who's on this list. Iris? Hi, I'm Iris Marie Bloom and I direct Protecting Our Waters and I'm also associated a member with uh, New Pulse Climate Action Coalition and a commissioner with Marbletown Environmental Conservation Commission. All three of those organizations have sponsored, co-sponsored and supported this webinar. Good to see everybody. All right, and I, I'll introduce myself again. Hello, I'm Jenny from Friends of the Earth US and I've been an organizer at Friends of the Earth for five years and I'm so excited to be uh, with you all tonight. I'm coming, I'm talking to you from New York City. Bill, do you wanna go? Sure, hi everybody, I'm Bill Kish. Um, I uh, am the organizer for stopcricketvalley.org. Um, that's uh, also our web address um, and a member of Resist CVE, um, both focused on stopping the Cricket Valley power plant, which is this thing that you see behind me. And I live about 20 miles from this plant. Thanks. Jeff? Yeah, hello folks. Thanks for joining tonight. Um, I'm Jeff Conant. I direct the International Forests Program with Friends of the Earth, um, based right here in my backyard in Berkeley, California. Um, and I'll just add that I was born in the great state of New York, so really happy to get to be a part of this with you all tonight. Thanks. All right. And another reminder for everyone who's joined our call, um, please make sure to introduce yourself in the chat to all, all attendees, not just panelists, so that everyone else can see who's on. And you can say your name, where you're from, and if you're a TIA client. And just so you all know, 50% um, of the folks who RSVP'd for this webinar were actually identified as TIA clients. So we're starting off strong. Um, building our base of clients to target TIA. Okay, so this is the agenda for the webinar tonight. We already covered introductions. We're gonna talk about who is TIA, and then we're gonna go into their connections to the Cricket Valley Energy Frack Gas Plant in Dover, New York, that many folks in New York have been working tirelessly and fighting to shut down um, for years. Then we'll go into TIA's investments in climate destruction in general, and including their investments in fossil fuels and deforestation and land grabbing. Then we'll talk about our campaign demands for TIA. And then we'll talk about our strategy to get TIA to meet those demands. And what you all came for, we'll talk about how everyone can get involved in our campaign. And we'll end it with questions. And just to remind, to let everyone know, we're gonna hold questions till the end, but we invite everyone to ask questions in the chat throughout the, the webinar that come up and we'll either get to them, we'll respond to you in the chat, or we will make sure to answer your questions at the end. And um, yeah, just a reminder, it'd be great to ask your question to all panelists and attendees so everyone can see every, you know, the response to your question. Okay, so let's start. I'll hand it off to Bill. Okay, can you hear me okay? Yep. Fantastic. Um, 
Oh, so one thing that I noted that uh, 53 percent of the people who registered for this webinar self-reported as TIAA clients. So a lot of you are very familiar with TIAA, which is which is great. Uh, for those of you who are not, um, TIAA is the country's largest provider of financial services for workers in education, research, um, the arts, and not-for-profit organizations in the government. Uh, TIAA refers to their individual, to individual employees whose retirement account they manage as clients and the schools and other organizations are called participating institutions. So you'll see that language used. They have over 5 million individual clients spread out over 15,000 participating institutions, giving them access to over a trillion dollars. Um, a trillion dollars is actually bigger than GDP of 80% of the countries in Europe. Um, so they have a lot of money available. Uh, next slide, please. So a lot of people may be familiar with TIAA CREF. Um, that's the name that they use since the 1950s. Um, recently, they dropped CREF in, as their name. And in 2014, they acquired Nuveen Investments and made them the investment manager for TIAA's portfolio. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, it, of course it's important that TIAA invests their clients money wisely. Uh, people are counting on TIAA to ensure that they can live out their retirement without financial an anxiety. Um, and you may have heard uh, that they recently started using the tagline, never run out. I hear that on my NPR station all the time. Next, please. Uh, so TIAA's money is their client's money. Um, so we would hope that TIA would deploy these assets in ways that match their client's ethical framework. Uh, for example, 77% of Americans prioritize renewables over fossil fuels. Um, so TIA recognizes this and they make a point of touting their responsible investing credentials at every opportunity. Next, please. So if you take a look at TIAA's website or other materials, you get a strong message of social responsibility. And that message is always front and center. You're really likely to feel good about TIAA when you listen to TIAA. Next. Here's another one. Um, I really feel good about TIAA right now. Uh, don't you? <laughs> and uh, next. Um, Wow, it looks like the, uh, the head of TIA's global investment uh, is, uh, is a climate activist. So I'm really loving this company right now. Next. Um, but there's some kind of a disconnect here. Um, I don't understand why all these activists are protesting against TIA. Uh, apparently, there's something just not right. Um, well, I guess we'll spend the next part of this webinar exploring the disconnect between TIA's talk and their actions. At the moment, I just want to point out that when you read TIA's responsible investment policies, it becomes clear that they'd like everyone else to act responsibly, but they don't have a very high standard for themselves. Next, please. So Cricket Valley Energy Center, we said we were going to talk about that. We chose the Cricket Valley Energy Center, also known as CVE, as a specific example of how TIA's actions don't match their messaging. This investment is particularly egregious because TIA didn't just buy stock in a frac gas power plant. They actually paid to build the plant. And now they own 35% of one of the largest frac gas plants in the Northeast. Um, Iris, uh, Iris is going to tell us more about the environmental impact of Cricket Valley. Thanks, Bill. <clears throat> yeah, CVE is, um, in addition to their 6 million tons of greenhouse gas emissions every year, they're going to be pouring uh, massive air pollution into the local air. CVE would emit 279 tons a year of smog-forming nitrogen oxide, which can increase respiratory infections, asthma, and risk for chronic lung disease. COVID-19 is most lethal for those whose lungs are already damaged. High levels of nitrogen oxide also harm vegetation, damaging foliage, decreasing growth, reducing crop yields. CVE would spew 191 tons of particulate matter and 118 tons of VOCs, including carcinogenic benzene. And that puts not only lungs, but lives at risk because uh, especially children, the elderly, pregnant women and babies, 
uh, benzene crosses the blood-brain barrier and the placenta. So in short, the air pollution CVE plans to dump with three schools close by is an outrage. The life cycle methane emissions are also sky high. Methane is at least 86 times worse than CO2 in its global heating impact. Um, okay, uh, Dover, New York um, is where CVE is sited. It's in a beautiful wooded valley um, called the Harlem Valley. And the Scaticock indigenous community has their home just to the east of the plant and a growing number of organic farms dot the landscape. As Iris mentioned, there are three schools in the immediate vicinity and just adjacent is the Great Swamp, which Iris will tell you about in a minute. Um, I'd like to mention that among CVE's many emissions will be sulfur dioxide and sulfuric acid, um, two compounds that are well known from the acid rain crisis of the 80s and 90s. Uh, because CVE is located in, in a valley, we expect that the sulfuric acid will um, settle in the valley and seriously harm plants and animals throughout the area. So, uh, yeah, Bill, that's not all in terms of the damage to the Great Swamp. <coughs> Excuse me. The um, CVE borders is right next to one of the largest freshwater wetlands in the area called the Great Swamp. And this is a vast and fragile wetlands. It's a unique habitat for diverse wildlife, including rare and endangered plant and animal species. And the Great Swamp helps humans as well. It filters water, essentially cleaning it. It recharges the aquifer. It provides flood control and it feeds New York City's drinking water system. Um, next slide. So why is TIA helping to destroy this wetland? CVE would siphon off 86,000 gallons a day and disrupt this vital habitat with noise, light, and pollution. What goes into the air, including, as Bill mentioned, the sulfuric acid, sulfur dioxide, and also the nitrogen oxide, VOCs, smog, and particulate matter, goes into the water. And any spill from CVE's diesel tank would devastate it. A resounding cry to protect the Great Swamp from CVE has gone up for 10 years and has not been heard. Back to Bill. Thanks. Uh, next slide, please. So Bill McKibben, um, who you probably mostly heard of, the founder of 350.org and one of the top authorities in the climate fight, had this to say about Cricket Valley. If ever there was a bad plan, this was it. Um, now Iris will bring you up to date about the efforts to stop the CVE plant. Yeah, well, thanks uh, to the local residents. For over 10 years, people have done everything in their power to stop CVE. They testified, organized, researched, rallied. Here, Reverend Billy Tallon and the Church of Stop Stop Choir joined a 2019 protest right across the street from the plant. Next slide. Physicians and scientists, elected officials, local residents, and those who would consume the electricity produced as well, New York City residents have all gathered together to oppose CVE. Local residents filed lawsuits because CVE's 2011 permits do not include relevant science about the health and climate impacts of fracking. Next slide. So the outrage has crossed state lines. Here in 2018 in Connecticut, farmers are blockading equipment being delivered to CVE. Next slide. Um, so here, Last November, the Smokestack 4 climbed to the top of CVE's almost completed smokestacks, the very place where foul, deadly emissions will pour if we can't stop CVE. Two farmers are among the Smokestack 4 who stayed there for 12 cold hours, shutting plant construction down for the day. And the next slide, we are... Uh, there we are, the Tractor 10, including Bill and I, locked down to prevent CVE from continuing construction in solidarity with the Smokestack 4. We were among the 29 folks who were arrested that day, and I'm proud of our exhilarating nonviolent action to protect people, health, climate, wildlife, and water. So we're going to move now to the big picture for fossil fuel investments. Uh, so TIAA is obviously on the wrong side of history. They have $10 billion invested in fossil fuel companies. They have helped to build a Carrollton, Ohio frac gas power plant 
um, prior to their building CVE. So they're building fossil fuel power plants, which is the exact wrong thing to do. Um, and they have deforestation investments, which you'll hear about shortly. Then all these investments undermine trends towards efficiency and renewable energy, which is what we do want. And they're really bad investments. Uh, next slide. So TIA is invested in all of these big bad guys, Chevron, ConocoPhillips, Halliburton, Kinder, Mor Kinder Morgan, Marathon Oil, Schlumberger. If you've done work on the front lines of the anti-fracking fight, pipeline fights, or the climate fight in general, you know these names. But what you might not know is these are terrible investments. Even prior to the COVID-19 outbreak, ExxonMobil's market value had crashed a full $184 billion just since 2014. And in the next slide, um, we know you on this call, you already know what burning fossil fuels gets us. Climate emergency we're now in with increasing heat waves, extreme fires, and increasingly frequent extreme storms like Hurricane Sandy and Maria and Typhoon Haiyan, which killed over 7,000 people in the Philippines. We're letting this one kangaroo convey the desperation that animals are also experiencing as at least 1 billion animals died last year in Australia's fires alone. Uh, next slide. With the climate emergency, it's a huge driver of inequality. So millions of climate refugees, mostly in the global south, are displaced every year as entire communities become unable to function due to desertification, sea level rise, famine, and other aspects of climate change. So this photo is one of scores of stories showing how climate change is driving Central American migrants um, out. In Honduras, El Salvador, and Guatemala, floods, drought, and storms have destroyed small farms and pushed people out. So, um, we're gonna go back to TIAA's specific investments and just, we're gonna look at just two products. Now this one is a really supposedly popular one. Uh, it's called Large Cap Growth Index Fund. And there's this awesome group called Fossil Free Funds. And you can look them up at fossilfreefunds.org. They rated this fund as a B rating, which is pretty high, pretty green. And, but it's not green at all. This fund is um, including 10 million in the top, so TIA invested 10 million in the top 200 owners of carbon reserves in this fund alone, and uh, 20 million in the oil and gas industry overall. That includes $2 million in fracking giant Cabot Oil and Gas. They're the ones that contaminated Dimmick in Susquehanna County, Pennsylvania. I could do a whole webinar on just Cabot Oil and Gas and their dirty tricks, but suffice it to say, they have been horrible in Texas, Oklahoma, West Virginia, and Pennsylvania. And as of January 1st, 2020, they had 13 trillion cubic feet of so-called proven reserves um, in the Marcella Shale. So they're planning to frack Pennsylvania to hell. Uh, next slide. Now this one is even more ironic um, because it's called the low carbon fund, right? So it raises your expectations. So um, this low carbon fund it actually includes 38 fossil fuel industry holdings in its, um, in its fund. And one of those, just looking at one of those is Entero. And Taro is the company that polluted Pavilion, Wyoming drinking water with benzene beginning in 2008. Um, they fought, and Taro then fought residents, they fought EPA scientists, they fought court battles for 10 years trying desperately to deny that fracking contaminates drinking water. They lost, but at an incredible cost. So I want to ask, DIAA, would you like your executives to be drinking benzene in your drinking water? I didn't think so. So it's time for TIA to dump all fossil fuel investments. Um, we're going to move on now to learn about TIAA's deforestation investments. 
deforestation is the second only to fossil fuels and climate destruction. So thank you, Jeff. Yeah, thanks. Um, can folks hear me? Yep. Great. Yeah, um, as Iris just said, um, rainforest destruction is second only to fossil fuels as a driver of the climate crisis. And um, part of why we're going to go into this here is, is one, just the deforestation problem itself, but two, that uh, Friends of the Earth and a number of other um, grassroots and frontline NGOs uh, started a campaign to get TIAA out of deforestation some years ago. Um, and I'm going to share a little bit of detail about what we've tried to do and where we've succeeded and where we have uh, yet to go in hopes that some lessons can be learned for for this campaign. Um, so we, uh, on the background of, of tropical deforestation, of course, it's not only a problem because we're losing the forests themselves, which have incalculable value, but um, deforestation is a big driver of the climate crisis, also the major driver of the global biodiversity crisis. Um, we're having, we're in the middle of the sixth great extinction and we're seeing a lot of news come out recently tying uh, biodiversity loss to emerging infectious diseases. So that's something that a lot of us are thinking about these days. Uh, we need to preserve our forests uh, among other reasons so that they can serve as reservoirs for the um, potential emerging viruses uh, that we need to protect ourselves from. Uh, rainforests are also of course home to multitudes of indigenous peoples. Um, and um, a lot of those peoples across the tropics are being moved off of their land or outright attacked um, as they have been throughout the world and throughout history in order to get to their land to clear the land for plantations for palm oil, cattle, soy, paper, timber, and rubber, which are the primary drivers of tropical deforestation. We call them deforestation risk commodities. And uh, in 2014, we did the research and found that TIAA, along with BlackRock and Vanguard and the other big funds, was one of the top 10 US investors in uh, deforestation risk uh, companies. And at the same time, we ha uh, found that TIA is one of the largest owners of farmland in the world. And you'd say, you know, but they're not farmers, are they? What are they doing owning all this farmland? TIAA really um, pioneered a model of using, of speculating on farmland, of, of buying up farmland as a real asset um, and speculating on its uh, value. Uh, as an investment product. Um, that's actually Nuveen's innovation. Um, and why that particular piece is a problem is because concentration of farmland in the hands of large investors um, excludes smallholder farmers, family farmers, and indigenous communities from ownership and access to that land. And one of the areas where um, TIA owns the most land is a, an ecosystem called the Cejado in Brazil, where they own 800,000 acres. Um, and that's a very fragile ecosystem and they've deforested quite a bit of their holdings there. Uh, you can go to the next slide if you would, Jenny. Um, so this is just a little bit of a, a, a deeper look at how deforestation is working across these commodities. You have a healthy forest, which is both a carbon sink and a wildlife habitat. Uh, commodity companies come in and literally burn down the forest um, and release massive amounts of uh, greenhouse gases and then replace that with, in this case, in the case of this illustration, a palm oil plantation, which has, you know, very minimal carbon sequestration um, abilities. And it's due to the palm oil industry specifically that Indonesia is the world's fifth largest greenhouse gas gas emitter. Indonesia is not an industrial country per se, um, and, and yet its rural economy is emitting almost as much uh, greenhouse gases as, um, as the leaders, the U.S. and China. Um, and of course, you all remember the fires in the Amazon last year in 2019, also driven by agribusiness. Um, and as it happens, TIA had or has investment links to many of the companies involved uh, in profiting from deforestation in both the Amazon and in Indonesia, as well as elsewhere. We can go to the next slide. 
Um, and one of the ways that we think about this in our in our campaign um, is, you know, we're working with community groups around the world who are being pushed off of their land uh, for large plantation development. And TIAA and other investors are profiting off of this. And TIAA is offering, you know, its beneficiaries a a uh, comfortable retirement. Well, why should our wealth depend on their impoverishment? Why should we be benefiting from companies who are literally uh, grabbing land out from under communities in the developing world? And in this case, um, it's just a couple of pictures of, of groups that we work with from Indonesia and Nigeria. Both cases are um, smallholder farmers who are getting together to protest the, the, the uh, theft of their land by companies which were or are in uh, TIA's portfolios. And we can begin to wrap up, I think, with the next slide. Um, so we've done um, everything in our power to try to move TIA to develop a no deforestation investment risk policy. Uh, we've gathered tens of thousands of signatures. We've held a couple of rallies in front of their headquarters in New York. We've gone to their offices in North Carolina. We've written them letters. We've, you know, done a lot. And all along the way, TIA has been extremely unresponsive. We know that they're hearing us because one, they adopted a no deforestation policy for their farms in Brazil um, in 2018, I think it was. Um, they've also significantly reduced investments in deforestation risk commodities. So they never adopted a policy on deforestation. They've never said, you, you're right, we will divest. Um, they simply seem to be quietly sort of shedding shares uh, in this sector. And I guess I just want to underline the point that um, we have been having these successes, despite the fact that they are um, completely non-responsive to us when we seek meetings um, and uh, practically hostile um, in terms of our engagements directly with TIA. And um, I'll leave it there and be available for questions at the end of the webinar. Thanks. Great. Thank you so much, Jeff. So yeah, we see some, some folks have questions. Please put it in the chat. And uh, Jeff is a great expert on you know, past campaigning on TIA. So he'll be on to answer folks' questions. So now we're going to move on to what are we asking TIA to do to divest, to address their investments in fossil fuels and deforestation and land grabbing. Um, we are asking them, it's pretty simple, we're asking them to divest. And the number one ask we have is divest from Cricket Valley Energy, the frack gas power plant in Dover, New York. And it actually would, um, it's supposed to go into operation you know, any day now. There's also a campaign going on targeting Governor Cuomo to ask him to shut the plant down. Um, so this is really to help put add pressure to that. And it would, it, it would be the largest um, frac gas power plant um, operating on the East Coast or in the Northeast, so big deal. Second demand is stop building new fossil fuel energy plants, period, and divest also from another harmful frac gas plant in Carroll County, and, uh, Carroll County Ohio. Um, third demand is implement a no deforestation policy, including land buys. And that, again, is continuing the efforts led by Friends of the Earth and other grassroots groups to get TIA to implement a no deforestation um, policy. And the last demand is divest from all fossil fuel investments and activities. So we are excited to be launching this campaign to get TIA to divest from all climate destruction. And I'll hand it off to Iris, who's going to Talk a little bit about the history of divestment. All right. So uh, we're just going to take a pause and dive into history for a minute because we want to focus on why divestment. We're doing divestment as a strategy because it really works. It uh, emerged first as a political strategy in the modern era when Black South Africans urged solidarity movements around the world to push banks, universities, and cities to divest from South African apartheid. Um, so when 5,000 protesters gathered outside, a this is in South Africa, gathered outside a Sharpeville police station 60 years ago, March 1960, the police opened fire 
murdering 69. And many of those uh, black South Africans were shot in the back as they tried to escape. Uh, next slide. The uh, movement for divestment happened, uh, was called for throughout the 60s and 70s. So this really shows a lot of persistence. It really helps when you have a famous and charismatic leader like uh, Bishop Desmond Tutu urging divestment. And we'll move on to an image that shows you how big the movement became by 1985. Thousands of protests had uh, pushed for divestment from banks, universities, and cities uh, in the United States and around the world. And it, it, it took enormous persistence to build the movement to the scale you see here at UC Berkeley in 1985. So the next slide is showing that we won. The divestment campaign really helped to pressure the South African government to ultimately dismantle the apartheid system. Nelson Mandela became South Africa's first black president in 1994. So we're going to jump forward 25 years with the next slide. And there's a, if you look, uh, I hope everybody um, looks at and becomes part of the Stop the Money Pipeline movement if you haven't already. This one uh, was a divestment action at Chase, and it happened just last September. I'm sorry, <laughs> this happened in February. But by last September, 350.org announced that $11 trillion has already been committed to divest from fossil fuels. The pace is really accelerating with this uh, new divestment movement. And we're going to go back to Jenny for more strategy on TIAA. Thanks, Iris. So just to build off of, you know, what Iris was talking about with this, the launch of the Stop the Money Pipeline campaign um, that turns the earth and our TI Divest campaign is part of, and we're going to be doing a bunch of actions targeting big banks next week around. Um, that really is coming off of a lot of success that we've had in the climate movement and uh, just targeting the financial sector in general and targeting big banks and trying to get them to address their investments in climate destruction. Um, so we're trying to basically yeah, build off that wave of momentum that has been created from many um, campaigns over many years um, that have actually led to a lot of success recently. So um, if, I don't know if folks have heard, you know, the big, one of the huge, largest investors in uh, fossil fuels in the world, BlackRock, um, whose headquarters are here in New York City, they recently put out a commitment to address their investments in some fossil fuels, not all, um, and we have to obviously see their actions, but just having them make that public commitment sent a ripple effect throughout the whole financial sector and it, it created, it caused many other uh, banks and investors to also make public commitments to addressing their, their climate impacts. Um, so basically the, you know, times are changing and TIA needs to get on board. Um, so we think that this is, you know, Apple time for, it's ample time for them to get on board. We've been targeting them on deforestation for years and there is a huge trend now. It's becoming much more popular to do the right thing on addressing the climate crisis. So we think this is a good time for them to divest from all fossil fuels and implement a no deforestation policy. Um, and also it's becoming much more risky to invest in you know entities like fossil fuel companies and, and projects like Cricket Valley, and it's becoming much more profitable to invest in green um, entities like renewable energy. So that's another reason for TIA to divest. Um, and how are we gonna make them meet our demands? Um, well, we are basically going to really organize the TIA clients themselves so just a reminder, TIA manages money, retirement money for university faculty around the country. Most of the big, big universities around the country, um, most of the ones just here in New York City are, uh, they work with TIA to manage their retirement funds. Um, and also a lot of big cultural institutions like museums um, work with TIA to manage their retirement money. So we are asking you know, everyone to help us organize folks on, on university campuses 
um, activists can help us do this work. Um, students, obviously the, the actual clients, the faculty, the, um, the other types of employees that work, have TIA funds directly are the ones that have the most power to influence TIA because they hold the money that makes TIA function and exist. Um, but every week, everyone can help out and we'll get into that. Um, yeah, and really, you know, at the end of the strategy, we are pushing TIA to divest. And, you know, if they don't budge, we will want, we will want clients to, to threaten, you know, to leave and go with another um, retirement fund manager. So um, the tactics we're going to use we are starting off our campaign with a sign-on letter um, that we are going to be sending to the TIA Corporate governance, governance and Social Responsibility Board. And they actually are a board made up of some university um, you know, staff or big leaders in the university world. So um, if anyone has connections to the board, let us know. Um, and we're asking folks to help get the organization to sign on to the letter. Um, the other huge tactic we're gonna use is resolution, uh, divestment resolutions that we're gonna be working with faculty and different universities to be passing. Um, there is precedent, there is a precedent for faculty to pass um, university resolutions. We, Friends of the Earth on our deforestation campaign worked with University of Madison, Wisconsin to pass a resolution. So we've created a toolkit to make it really easy for faculty senates or faculty unions to pass their own resolution. Um, we are also launching an online petition that anyone is open to sign. We are encouraging specifically TI clients to sign that. And of course, we'll be using social media and just continuing the pressure. And when we're done with social distancing, we are going to ramp up the pressure by doing actions at TI headquarters and TI offices that are located all around the country. So Absolutely. I'll hand it off to Iris to talk you how to get involved in all these tactics. Absolutely. So this is the most important part, which is what you can do. And uh, as Jenny said, we were, we actually spent the first couple months um, putting a lot of planning into doing actions at TIA headquarters and, and uh, we're sure that will happen post pandemic. So you can be envisioning that, thinking about it. Um, but what we can do right now is really important. Um, so you can do one thing, everybody on this call can do one thing right away, which is sign the petition. And then we have one thing you can do as organizers. And that is to figure out even one person that you know who is associated with a university or college as students, as faculty, as staff, as board, as alums, and share the resolution toolkit with them. It's a great tool. I mean, I've had to write resolutions where there was no toolkit. So they, um, they have a good tool to start working with. And you can give us their name if they uh, give you permission. And then the third thing is, if you are part of an organization, whether it's a teeny tiny grassroots, or a giant nonprofit, please make sure your organization signs on to our letter to TIAA's board. And I would go to the next slide, please. And you see that the petition is the low hanging fruit, um, but it really does matter to get it launched and get it going. So don't worry, we're gonna send an email tomorrow to everybody who was on this call that will have the link to the petition. It'll have the organizational sign on letter and the resolution toolkit. Um, and we also are really, really interested in your ideas and comments, as well as your questions. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Bill for the Q&A discussion. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, we have a number of questions that have gone through the Q&A. We've got a number of yep. questions that were in the chat. So- yes. And I was able to, to note some of them down. Um, should we start with the ones like from Ben Schwartz and go from there? And, for, and everyone feel free to keep um, typing in questions in the chat and we can also unmute people if they wanna ask their question live. Just um, 
we have to, if anyone wants to ask a question live, you should click on the like hand, raise your hand button. Let's, let's run down a couple of the, uh, the ones the, people already asked. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so somebody asked, uh, will a couple people actually asked if we'll make the slides available and we can certainly do that. Um, we are going to send out a follow-up email tomorrow with a lot of links and we'll just make sure that we include the slides and we're also recording the webinar. So, um, so we'll, we'll put that link in as well. Um, Jenny, any, any other questions that you saw coming through Facebook? I don't have any access to that. Yeah, so, well, the question, I, I think someone did answer it, but if someone wanted to elaborate a little, if TIA divests from a, a given existing project, what does that mean? Would they then sell the investment to another company? That was from Ben Schwartz. So I'd like to answer that one. Um, so with the example of Cricket Valley, for example, I, I don't think that uh, that uh, TIA is going to um, take their third of the plant and, and bulldoze it. Uh, they would um, they would sell it um, probably at a loss because um, with the uh, introduction of the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act in New York State, um, that plant has a very limited lifespan, uh, 20 years by law now. So, um, so we want TIA to get rid of it. Um, we want them to get rid of everything that, um, that doesn't meet the, uh, the qualifications for, um, for, for being um, climate sensitive, for being ecologically sensitive, um, and for um, climate justice. So um, TIAA can do that, and they can still do a good job of, um, of protecting their clients' investments. And I think in a lot of cases, the investments that they can make will be a lot safer than fossil fuels and, um, and power plants that we've seen can become stranded assets. Thanks, Bill. And another question, maybe to Jeff. Um, and there's another question I think, Jeff, you could answer after about any institutional success, have any success in, in, in institutional context, you know, of maybe talk about the Madison, Wisconsin resolution. But the other question is, what does including land buys mean to not, Margaret asks, what does it, including land buys mean to not but already deforest land? I think she meant to not buy already the yes. land, probably. Sure. And, yeah. and it looks like um, someone gave a, a quick answer to that, but it's uh, essentially, um, again, TIA it purchases land outright and then uses the uh, profits from the farming of that land or from the sale, resale of that land to pay out um, dividends to investors. And uh, the problem is that it's... Um, essentially removing uh, smallholder farmers and in the case of Brazil, uh, indigenous peoples from, from the market, the land market and the access to land. Um, and in the case of their Brazilian land holdings, TIA has been found to have actively uh, cleared forest and other vegetation from lands in the Cerrado, which is a very fragile ecosystem uh, there and replacing that with industrial soy, uh, monocultures and and others so essentially they're advancing an industrial monoculture model of farming uh, and we think it's um, just it's a little too late uh, to be uh, advancing large-scale industrial agriculture in the midst of the climate crisis so Thank you, Jeff. Um, I, one thing that I notice is a lot of people are asking about how they, um, as faculty members perhaps, or uh, people who are involved with uh, TIA for their retirement, can impact uh, TIA. And we will be sending out uh, these toolkits that we mentioned. Um, we will um, also send out the link to the uh, to the uh, uh, to the the various documents that we that we are sending in letters um, and we have the um, what what is the thing that I'm talking about that people sign up for Jenny sign on to a petition um, uh, there's an online petition and then there's an organization sign on letter that yeah. your union or your organization can sign on to so the uh, so ev everyone should please sign on to the petition whether you are a TIA client or not 
Um, if you um, are a faculty member and you think that you can um, talk to uh, the head of your faculty senate or uh, organize for that, we have the toolkit um, and that will explain the process. But basically the goal is you know, not to get TIAA to offer um, more green funds um, and then at the same time offer their same dirty funds. We want them to digest entirely. And uh, I would love to just add one point to that because people have asked about approaching their unions. And as Bill just suggested, one thing a union can do is to sign on as a union to the, and especially as a teacher's union, for example, to the letter to TIAA, but also you can take the wording from the resolution toolkit, even though it's you know focused on universities, colleges, just adapt it a little bit and use it for the union. And that's a great tactic. And for unions, I think it's really important to talk about how dirty and deadly fossil fuel jobs are. I mean, there's, this is an industry where people are burned to death. This is the fracking industry is, has an incredible rate of illness, injury, and death, um, as does oil and gas overall. And, you know, generally speaking, solar jobs and, you know, <laughs> they're not like that. So I, I think that we can help you come up with a lot of talking points for getting unions involved. And just a, another institutional success to share about unions is um, we have been working with um, PSC CUNY Union. They're the union for CUNY City College of New York faculty. And they did pass a resolution um, calling on all fossil fuel divestment. Um, so you could, in, like Iris was saying, have your union pass a resolution using the language we have in our toolkit, calling on TAA to divest from you know, all these different entities. Um, and someone also asked, Susan, I think in, ad in addition to pressuring your institution to leave TIA, what can individual clients do? Again, you know, pass a resolution calling on TIA to divest. Bef you know, you could do that before you threaten to leave them. And also when we are able to, people can do actions at their local TIA office. Friends of the Earth, we did that a lot with our deforestation campaign um, where, you know, we had people do letter deliveries at their local TAA office, like on their university. Um, I know even some hospital employees have TIAs um, as a retirement manager. So we had people in the Midwest doing that. Um, so that's a great thing to do. And, and we, we have folks on our team that can train in like more escalated actions if, if that's what you're interested in doing. Um, let's see, any other questions? I see Ruth wanted to ask a question so I can unmute you. Or we have two people. So Janet and Ruth, so I'll go with uh, Ruth first. Um, okay, I just unmuted you, Ruth. Hello? You are unmuted if you'd like to talk, Ruth. Um, I am with a coalition called Divest New York and we've been working on divestment for a couple of years now. Um, we're the coalition that um, got New York City um, pension funds to agree to divest and we currently have a campaign on the state divestment um, pension fund and we're also working on a teacher's divestment fund. So it's really awesome to hear all that you're doing and I'm hoping we can figure out how to connect because it seems like, especially with our teacher's campaign, there's going to Oh, we lost you, especially with your teacher's campaign, what? Hoping with the teacher's campaign, we will be able to coordinate with you. Um, there's probably a lot of, um, you know, common ground there, um, common outreach. And we're hoping that, um, you know, we can move forward together. Awesome. Thanks for sharing, Ruth. Yeah, feel free to share your contact info with the panelists. Um, and we will make sure to follow up with you. All right. And Janet, I just um, unmuted you. Hi, um, this is a really exciting call. Um, we've been talking about getting a TIA campaign started up at Stanford. And um, one of the things, I mean, we looked at fossilfreefunds.org um, when we started talking about this and they have a number of funds that they characterize as green that are highly non-green. 
what I'm wondering is, it seems like asking people to leave TIAA if they don't change their spots is maybe not a particularly realistic ask if there isn't another pension set up to go to. I wonder if in, if, I don't, I, I'm a little worried about sounding like I'm proposing half a loaf, but if they had a couple of funds that were actually fossil free, that, you know, got A plus ratings on fossilfreefunds.org, um, do you have any sense that that is a reasonable intermediate ask if we could get them to put up some really green funds and then put a lot of pressure on people to move their accounts or their university's subscriptions to those funds? That's a really good question. And I would love to hear what other people think about that as well. But my sense of it is that um, that's been tried. So people have been asking for truly fossil free funds and the one that's called low carbon, <laughs> you know, that's right. why I went over that. Um, yeah. So I, I personally wouldn't see, and this is just my opinion, um, I wouldn't see any harm in including that demand that they provide a, f a fund that's really truly fossil free. However, what we don't want is to focus on that as a strategy so that they don't bother to divest from they meaning TIAA um, would use that almost as a diversion tactic. Like look over here at this tiny little sure. green, super green fund, because we really want to focus on the divestment. No, um, I agree. And, yeah. um, and I, uh, I don't want to give them a, a, an out, but at the moment they're, frantically greenwashing which is dreadful exactly so, and so part of our job is to expose that and to expose it really loud and hard and persistently um i would love to know more and maybe we can talk offline sometime about how that you said it's been tried to get them to offer greener instruments yeah, i'd yes. love to know how how and when that happened and I, I think Jeff might have some insight. Jeff? Yeah, let me jump in. And hello, Janet. Uh, it's great Hi. that you're on the call. Um, two things. One, um, TIA has these social choice funds, which we've pointed out are pure greenwashing. But the reason they have those social choice funds is because of agitation from organizers some years ago that got them to, you know, adopt socially responsible funds. And of course, they didn't do a good enough job. But just to, I think that's an important point to note that that was a response. They developed this low carbon fund, which is not a low carbon fund. But anyway, it just shows that they are, um, you know, that they're susceptible to pressure. The thing that we're asking in the Black Rocks Big Problem campaign, um, I think really applies here, where um, we are not just asking them to develop a couple of green fossil free funds, but to make those their default options for all clients. Um, and that's something right. I don't think folks in this coalition have talked about yet, but that would be a proposal is, you know, yeah, that TIA should develop some fossil free funds and make that the the default so that if you want funds with fossil free you know with 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 petroleum in them you can opt into those funds um if you want to destroy the planet but the default is you don't um so that that's a proposal and then i'll just add um the point of the faculty senate toolkit um and the idea of faculty senate resolutions is not necessarily to get people to move their own retirement funds out of TIAA, but to get universities to put pressure on TIAA to develop um, a different approach. Right. Yeah. Good. Great. Thank you. And just in the uh, sake of time, um, we have like one more question I think we could get to. Um, but thank you, Jeff and Janet. Um, one question about Cricket Valley from Laura Schindel on Facebook. Um, how does TIA stop CVE if they divest 
do we know if the money, you know, has already been spent on CVE that they, you know, the, the money that they invested um, since is, since Creek Valley is almost done with construction, how is that, how would that work? There's a reasonable um, question. Uh, do you want to get take it, Iris, or do you want me to? I'll, I'll say one thing about that and then see what you have to add. Um, what, so what's obvious is that just getting TIA to divest from Cricket Valley would not in itself shut the plant down or, or necessarily even um, cause a lot of harm to Cricket Valley because presumably they would find someone they would sell their part to. Uh, what it would do would be to give Cricket Valley's reputation a hit and give TIAA's reputation a hit and make TIAA feel enough pain that they would think twice before building another fossil fuel power plant. So realistically, um, the strategies that are gonna shut down Cricket Valley, in my view, are more about pressuring Cuomo and being relentless on that front. And this is just part of it. So it would help, but by itself, it wouldn't shut down CVE at all. Basically, the same, thing I, basically the same thing I, I would have said. Thanks, Iris. Great, thank you. And I think that is all the questions we can take, but thank you so much everyone for all of the thoughtful questions and for joining. Um, just to wrap, before I give it to Iris to wrap up, I wanted to give a plug for the Stop the Money Pipeline um, campaign is kicking off. We're doing a bunch of different actions throughout the week in, in honor of Earth Day, 50th anniversary, and um, lots of climate strike actions happening next week. So there's actually a Climate Finance 101 webinar happening tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern that Jeff from Friends of the Earth is also going to be speaking on. So I just shared in the chat the link to RSVP for that webinar. It's going to be great. Um, and then, of course, yeah, and I'll give it to Iris to talk about next steps. Uh, okay, so we're going to wrap up because it's been an hour. We were thinking we would only be on for 45 minutes. So I just hope everybody who's on this call, <coughs> excuse me, realizes that, uh, oh, and I think we have one last slide to say thank you. Oh, yes. um, that everybody realizes this is it. This is the campaign launch. So this is really the beginning of the TIAA Divest uh, campaign. And we're really grateful to have all of you. Yes, we are gonna send you all the links uh, on email tomorrow. So don't worry about that. And we probably will have another webinar. We just haven't set the date yet, but to keep the strategy going. Um, but just to wrap up this call, we've been working really hard and we're really buoyed up by your spirit and um, your participation and your commitment. And every winning movement is composed of literally millions of individual small actions, deciding to show up, deciding to share, deciding to follow up is profoundly important. So we're gonna win this campaign. And I'm wondering if we can unmute everybody so we can say uh, goodbye. But what we wanna say is a shout, which is resist, divest, persist, and just chaotically shout it out so that on the count of three, are we ready, Jenny, to unmute? All right, I'm going to unmute everyone. Resist, divest, persist. Okay. Res one, two, three. Resist. Resist. Divest. Resist. Persist. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, all. What do, what do we do next? Ah. Look for the there. email. Look, Look for the email. email. All right. Look for the email. Join our, and Janet, um, yeah, I think yeah. if anybody who's on this call really wants to join our team and strategize with us, let us know. I would like to do that. And Fantastic. Jeff and I should talk out here in California too. Fantastic. Yeah. Our, our email is tiaa.divest at google.com. At gmail.com. Uh, sorry, gmail.com, yeah. I thought we had that on a slide somewhere, but yeah. So tiaa.divest at gmail.com. And more to come. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. All right. See you soon, everybody. <laughs>